Right, so I am ready to, 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 to dive into this. So I want to talk about, and I want to talk with you guys about um, the ever-present question of locals, right? Fighting game community locals. How do I... How And this is aimed at, at, at players that don't have access to one and are in the situation where they pretty much have to make it themselves, right? They have to be the one to really, you know, put in that, that main effort and be the one to kind of create the local and, and you know, put the feelers out and gauge if there's interest because um, the results of my poll the other day were, uh, I asked on Twitter, uh, please answer this poll. Honestly, what would you consider your maximum travel time to your nearest fighting game community local in order to play offline? As I get many people messaging me asking where their nearest local is and everyone seems different in their expectations of travel time, basically. So after just under 1,400 results, 47% said that up to an hour away, so within, within an hour space, uh, would be their limit, right? So they would go to a local if it was within an hour of their current travel time, followed uh, by 24% up to 30 minutes away, which is obviously the absolute closest of the closest. 19% um, said up to two hours away, and then the remaining... 9.5 10% whatever said as long as it takes I will travel and I will go this these results pretty much in my opinion from what I've seen personally perfectly sum up what I see in players that come to locals be it my local that people come to you know in Leicester I mean even I mean I say mine but it's our local here right as a community in the Leicester area um, be it local stuff that I've seen from like the Manchester boys when they used to do things, uh, Electric Dojo, um, the Scottish guys up in Glasgow, uh, Newcastle, um, Leeds, uh, the list goes on, right? Like when I look at who is going to those locals, it's usually people within that kind of like one to two hour radius, right? That's generally how you see it, how you see it work. But I got a honestly quite upsetting amount of people saying, I really want to do a local and would be willing to do whatever it takes to travel to one, but there's nothing in my area and I don't know how to go about changing that. I don't know how about you know, looking for players, potential players. I don't know how to go about, you know, starting up my own. How do I even begin, right? Like these, these, these people that are, they want a local, but they just don't know that and there's nothing they can do and they don't know how to make one. They don't know what it involves. Um, this talk we're about to have is pretty much aimed at those people, right? And, and, and hopefully this is helpful for those of you out there that are considering going to a local or maybe even like small event organization, because as, as Hyper Combo, we have organized, um, you know, qualifying events for major like pro competition tournaments. We've organized qualifiers for, we've done our own, you know, we, we have a healthy relationship. We've managed to source prizes from Bandai Namco, uh, Warner Brothers, uh and, and and these are over across multiple games as well over the two years um so this talk is pretty much going to be answering about uh, you know a bunch of questions that i got on twitter uh and hopefully the questions you may have in chat that uh on, on ways to organizing events and how to hopefully put the feelers out there and and grow a local community so first things first i'm going to talk about the actual logistics of what does it involve when you physically how do you how do you how, how do you make a local right what's the recipe what's the what what, what are the ingredients for, for making a local a local what do you need right and that is and and they are a a few things right that there, there, there are a handful of things that you really need to make sure that you have nailed before you can even begin to, to have players the most important thing is you gotta have games to play right you have to have the hardware to 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 have events to have people come up and be able to physically play games uh fahrenheit 1297 thank you so much for the twitch prime sub bro i appreciate you thank you very much um so fundamentally you need a venue to play in you need consoles to play on those are your absolute two fundamental like if you've got those two you can start playing right i know it sounds super like obvious because it is but with those two things you can have a local you, you 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 can have somewhere for people to play and consoles for them to play on right like and and the hardware that involves right so yeah you're going to need a console it's going to need a monitor it's going to need a power cable it might need a power strip um it's going to have to be updated right but fundamentally console monitor venue right now the venue is 
in my in my experience when, when whenever people have asked this before the venue is where people find themselves the most kind of like nervous because every venue is different every single venue you you will go to now to get a venue usually requires you to find a place that you're interested in find out if it has like you know a room for hire a back room a room upstairs a basement um you know a section of the venue um very common places you will find will be like bars uh pubs um you know uh, student bars like places like that like if you're in a city or a large town it's quite easy to find somewhere that will hire people out now the question is how much does it cost what is your budget how much are you willing to spend uh, are you looking to you know source that are you looking for that money to cost you yourself are you looking to get to get it from the community that will eventually turn up hopefully um and all that will will depend on where you are so first things first is finding the place that you want now this requires a bit of knowledge in your area you can have community centers you can have like you know maybe like public halls but the easiest ones in my experience are bars pubs um you know social bars like anything like that if you're in a city i would look for places that are popular with 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 universities and students because two reasons one students typically make up a decent amount of any kind of community interest especially when it comes to games esports anything like that in modern times students are absolutely going to be the ones that are the most interested in turning up and obviously students if they're going out they may be a bit more confident they might not be as quite you know uh, you know, recluse and, 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 and nervous about meeting new people but also um, students of course in anyone here that's been to university or had a, a, any kind of social activity in university uni societies right university societies exist and for those who don't know what societies are they're effectively clubs within the university so there might be like a a heavy metal society which is like a club it's a social thing where people can just join and the whole point of that society is you talk about heavy metal music you might go to local gigs you might go to like open mic nights you might just do you might hire out a bar and just play heavy metal all night and you know people bring new cds or songs and everyone listens to right there are cut i've seen societies for card games for board games for you know, uh, for various types of music. And a big one nowadays are esports societies. Every university that I know of, especially in Leicester, have their esports societies, which are, if you're a fan of competitive video games, you join the society and you can, like, you know, people go and watch events and they'll buy tickets to places or they'll just do viewing parties at houses and stuff like that. Um, but that generally means that uh, if, if you have, if you can find a bar that people use for societies, they will probably be more than open for you to have your fighting game local there as well. Um, we, you know, for example, Hyper Combo as our as our example, we obviously we use Firebug Bar in Leicester, which is a very popular student bar. Um, we, when we were first looking for potential venues to to start Hyper Combo, we were looking around for that exact thing. You know, bars that are popular with students and and young adults, uh, preferably kind of within the city centre area. Um, that we knew had capabilities of hiring out so you know we looked around at a couple a handful um you know we we we, we messaged firebug you go in you ask for a contact telephone number sometimes you can just google it and find it you phone someone or there's an email address and you literally just you have to ask and it's hey do you have somewhere we can hire if so how much does it cost how much in advance do you have to book because that's the thing if you found your venue sometimes a venue will be free sometimes it will cost you based on hours maybe for example so they might charge you hourly uh it might be free and obviously if you if your society spends a certain amount on drinks you know that's that will pay for it sometimes it's both it completely depends on where you are and where you go but the big thing you should consider is if you're looking for the venue you want a venue that will be able to have the same day every every each, either every week or every two weeks or if you're looking at doing like maybe once a month the same day the same rough time the same rough weekend per month because honestly one of the most important things about any local is consistency you want anyone that is potentially going to be a player to your event you want to make sure that they they can kind of get the muscle memory they can get it into their kind of like routine that this day means this event this day means this local is happening right so for example hyper combo we have mondays mondays are our hyper combo day every two weeks we have every other monday 
we would, uh, even at first, we would make sure that we were individually booking them every two weeks. And if every now and then there was a week that was booked or was busy, we would maybe swap it to a week onwards. But we would make sure that the priority is making sure it is the same day, right? Because you don't want your local to be Monday one week and then Wednesday the next and then Tuesday, two weeks after that, because then people have no, it's hard for them to plan for it, right? Even if they're trying to like get into the habit that that's where they want to go, having it be the same day of the week, even if you have to skip a week or so, in my opinion, the same day is it should always be a priority because it's so easy for people to be able to get it into their, you know, their, their brains that this day now means this local will be a thing. So once you've done this, obviously you've got your venue. If your venue is free, like some venues are free, some venues will be uh, free provided you've, you know, sold a, a certain amount of drinks behind the bar. Maybe, you know, people uh, will come in and spend a certain amount and that will effectively pay for the night. Some places you'll just pay for the hour. Some places you'll pay for the evening. And uh, if, if you are in a venue that charges, that's where you can go towards entry fees. But I will say, if you are looking to start up a local, Ex do expect for it to come at some personal cost to you. Uh, for example, I'm not going to go into the details of my financial situation, but I have paid, um, I have paid, uh, so so it, it costs us a small amount every time we do Hyper Combo. And that amount comes out of my pocket personally, because it for me, it is affordable. It is not super expensive. It's not breaking the bank, but I would rather myself pay it and be able to make the venue free for everyone and just say, it's free, don't worry about it. And that helped people be able to come over, right? So over the two years, I've probably spent quite a considerable amount of money over the two years for that to happen. But because it is a small cost every two weeks, I put it into my monthly budgeting, right? As I do my monthly finances, I consider that a, a part of it. Um, it hasn't been something that has caused me any real problems because, you know, budgeting properly. And I would rather do that and, and the players at Hyper Combo to be able to just turn up and play whatever. The, the exception is if I do bigger weekend events, because you will find that for venues, bars, clubs, anything like that. Weekends are usually in higher demand, which is why you typically see a lot of local like casual stuff be during the week is because during the week, a lot of those bars are more available. Uh, and on the weekend, they're booked like months in advance often. So if you're going to book them, you have to make sure they will usually come with a heavier cost than doing it through the week. Um, but that is just something you're going to have to accept that it will cost you some money, especially at first when you're trying to get it off the ground. I'm not talking it's going to cost you hundreds and hundreds of pounds. It's not going to cost you an absolute fortune, but it might, you know, be prepared for it to cost you some money for your first couple of outings while you just try and get it off the ground, see if people will turn up, see how it goes. Um, but if it is a particularly expensive venue or the people that turn up don't mind, you can just charge an entry fee. So it can be like three pound a head maybe. So three pounds every two weeks for someone to come in and there you go. If you get like 10 people, that's 30, you know, three pounds, 10 people, that's 30 quid right there. That might even, you know, depending on where you are, that might even by itself be enough for the night, you know, if, if, if everyone does. And if it's not quite enough, it's going to cost you dramatically less uh, as, as, as you go through um, the times that you organize. So this is the, so this is your venue. So let's say now that your venue is, is something you have to find. What helps? A any local will help with the stream. A, a, a stream absolutely helps any local have more exposure, have more eyes around. People are more incentivized to come to the event. Um, but, the, but the stream is where you are looking at a lot more of a cost. We are very fortunate at Hyper Combo in the sense that, of course, you know, you guys hear him all the time. Will A, Stream Lord, Eternal Lord, Will. Uh, is one of these streamers in the UK that uh, that will, you know, go and broadcast grassroots events. He's been doing it for years and he's very good at it. He's one of the best in the UK. We are very lucky that he he drives down about an hour from where he lives to Hypercombo every time, brings his own equipment, sets it all up and, we're, and is ready to go. But if you just want a stream, the basic equipment you need for any stream for a local activity is you need... Um, uh, a laptop or a PC of some of some sort to to run your your capture software to run your streaming software whatever it is you're using so I would consider a basic high quality streaming or you know, decent quality streaming setup for a local to be a PC or a lap usually a laptop for locals because it's just a bit more portable but a PC if you if you drive and you have the means to get it around 
to run your stream off of and to capture your 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 uh, your gameplay for a console usually a capture card of some sort so even like the same kind of like for example i could bring my setup to a local and use that as a streaming setup but that's not always necessary right so if you have a capture card for the console to capture your gameplay uh, console, of course, a monitor to read Twitch chat off, maybe, preferably, um, but that's like an optional thing. The laptop itself, uh, and fundamentally, that is that is the main thing. You have like a, a commentator cam, a couple of microphones. They can be just generic standard headsets. You can get anything, you know, Amazon. That there are there are loads of third party headsets that are considerably less less costly nowadays. Obviously, the more you the less you spend, the less it's gonna you know, the, the lower quality you're gonna have. But a commentator cam, two headsets, console, capture card, monitor, thing to stream from. For the most part, that is the absolute basic basic. But as 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 you begin to want higher quality, you can go for like player cams, you can go for an audio mixer, so you can kind of balance the sound a bit more. You can just go with like splitters early on. If you are really on a budget and you want to save, you can do that. But obviously the, the quality will take a hit because of it. But it's all up to you. It depends on how much you want to stream, what you want to do. But the big thing as well is mobile data. It is very rare that any venue is going to have... It is very rare that any venue is going to have good enough on-site internet for you to stream from. There is a 9 out of 10 chance that you are going to need to bring your own mobile data. This can be like a portable hotspot. This can be a, a tablet with, with a data plan. It could be your phone. It could be your mobile phone data plan. Um... For this kind of thing, it is absolutely essential that you go with data because most locals, unless you have a dedicated line, like some places do, and it's really cool. But in my experience, most places don't, and you usually got to rely on mobile data, which means that obviously the quality is going to take a bit of a hit. Um, but as long as it streams and it runs, that is the most important thing because streaming means exposure. Streaming, but why stream it? I mean, it, it, this leads into my the next point I'm going to make. It helps people be aware of what's going on. Having a stream exponentially makes it more appealing for potential uh, attendees to your local. To um, if you if you run events and you want to help kind of source prizes, having a stream with video helps um, you know give you more legitimacy in the eyes of publishers and devs. Are like, oh, okay, cool. You know, these guys they know what they're doing, right? They've got a stream and everything. You think it sounds silly, but trust me that that is how it goes sometimes. Um, also it helps local players feel like, you know, they're a bit, they get a bit more used to playing on stream. Even if it's, if, even if it's a stream that has 20 viewers on it, 10 viewers on it, it's playing and it's playing in front of a live audience, be it 10 people, be it 200, be it 2000. It doesn't matter. Local players. And again, this is partly why people go to locals in the first place. Don't lose sight of why people go to locals. They go to locals because they like offline play and they want to do more of it. They want to get better at it. And playing in front of a stream, even if it's got barely anyone watching, is playing in front of a live audience. Your local commentators are going to just have a chuck a headset on. They feel a bit more relaxed. They feel a bit, little bit less anxious talking in front of a busy, you know, busy, uh, busy stream. And it's so much better for local commentators to kind of dip their toes in, get their feet wet. Um, as well as players, obviously playing on stream, it really helps. And it's it's something to share around, right? Like all it takes is a, a, a retweet from someone in the area to go, oh, cool. Didn't know this was here. Like the amount of times, like we actually, we might have some people in chat that, that right now I, they, they, they might be here because it's happened to a bunch of people. How many of you guys have attended your first hyper combo because you were watching the stream and saw that it was in Leicester? Because I know that happened to, uh, who was it? Was it Mr. Was, was it Viper? It was, it was one. Of, yeah, no, it was you, Dafty. It was you. It wasn't Viper. It was you. Dafty in chat, literally. All we can say is, was watching Hyper Combo game, you're not a true from gamer. the stream. It was one of our quiet nights as well. It was one of our quiet days. I think it was like uh, an early MKX one when MKX was kind of on the back burner. And Dafty was just watching. It was like, oh, you're in Leicester? Cool. I'll tell and now Dafty's one of our like absolute most, most dedicated regulars by far. and comes every time. Um... And it, it just generally makes the whole thing look a little bit more professional, makes it look a little bit more switched on, like it knows what it's doing. Not that it's, not that it's bad if it doesn't have one. It just it just looks better if you do have one, is what I'm saying. But don't consider it an absolute, like, you know, don't run before you can walk. A stream is something that really helps. But if you are on the fence about even starting one to begin with, you know, it's not something you should focus on immediately unless you have the equipment and you're really interested in doing it. Because fundamentally, your stream, if there's people to play, you know, if your local has like two people, 
uh, obviously streaming might be a bit difficult because someone's manning the stream and there's only one one other person to play, right? So don't see it as an absolute priority, but it is something you have to consider. Uh, all those things that I mentioned about like equipment and, and what you need to for an absolute like base base level stream. Um, but this actually leads me on to what I think most people find as uh, the most difficult. The most difficult part is I'm willing to I'm willing to book an I'm willing to book a venue. I'm willing to find a date. I'm willing to spend money on it. But how do I tell people about it? How how do I let people know that this local exists? Especially if you're someone that doesn't have like a particularly large social media following or you're new to social media, perhaps, um, and you want people to be aware. My answer to that, my first answer is start using social media because you are going to need it. It is absolutely the most useful tool you have is you need to be on Twitter. You need to be on Discord. You need to be on Facebook. Yes, it's 2020 and I said Facebook, but trust me, it's important. Everywhere there are a lot of people you need to be on and you need to be active because word of mouth spreads once you've initially done the legwork, right? You want to make sure that you are looking at anywhere that's remotely close to you. It could be your nearest local could be three hours away but if it exists, message them and say, hey, I'm starting something over here. Could you give it a retweet? Could you give it a share? Do you have anyone local that might be able to share it around, right? You need to, to get in local gaming pages, right? Let's say let, 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 let's say a random ass a, a random ass town in the UK. Let's go for somewhere uh Ipswich. Let's say Ipswich in in the United Kingdom is a fairly large town, but it's a large town in a fairly quiet county, really. Um, Ipswich is not a place I would consider as a major gaming hub, right? Uh, I don't know if Ipswich has its own, you know, um, fighting game community already. Let's let's just pretend for, exa for a second that it doesn't. If you are starting from absolute scratch, you want to make sure that you are on Twitter, you, what, you have a Discord made, uh, or you have a Facebook. You need something with a big social presence, right? Usually it's Twitter is essential and then Facebook, Discord interchangeable based on where your players are. For example, Hyper Combo, a lot of our players are actually on Facebook and not so much Discord. So we don't need both because the Facebook works really well for us. But the Twitter is also the one where we get the most of the news out there. So let's say you're starting from absolute scratch. You want to obviously get creating, get creating those accounts, get creating those, uh, those, 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 those events or those pages for your events. And if you know people that are like within a couple of hours, send it around. You know, if you are within the community and you want to start spreading the word, message people, share it around. Obviously, don't 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 spam people's inboxes. Don't send people like 10 messages or whatever, but like make sure people are aware. If there's, if there's a, a community three hours away, say, hey guys, don't suppose you could give this a share for us. Don't suppose you could, you know, maybe signal boost this a little bit. Um, but a big thing is, again, look think of the kinds of player that will, will will come up and the first thing in my opinion again university societies you know college society whatever it is like anywhere that's like higher education that is going to be a, a, a prime audience for any kind of local activity get in touch with your local universities and say hey you know I'm doing a fighting games thing. Is there any way you can maybe share it around your your you know your internal esports societies? See if you can get in touch with someone. Usually, usually a society will have a head, and that head is like you know happy to you know accept emails and stuff like that. You know, get in touch with whoever it has to be from like a, a university. Obviously, as long as it's done properly, of course. You know, don't go don't go uh, you know getting too crazy with it. You want to make sure that you just contact people and you. Uh, just, just again, just, just, just try and signal boost the fact that it exists in the first place. MS Sash, thank you so much for the eight month resub, my friend. Welcome back. I think I'm saying that right now. Eight months in the future, no more massage here, no siree. But uh, even things like, again, Facebook pages, like if you're Ipswich, literally scour the internet, like Ipswich gamers, Ipswich gaming, Xbox, Ipswich, Xbox Suffolk, Xbox whatever, PS4. PC gamers, whatever it is, Mortal Kombat UK, uh, Street Fighter UK, UK fighting games, any social pages that have any kind of traction that might be relevant to your area, you need to be posting there and you need to be doing it every time you have an event, you know, because it is absolutely just 
getting the word out there at the very start is always the most difficult thing about it. Because it's the same thing if you build anything, right? If, if you're building anything from zero, it's very easy to see nothing around you and get demoralized. But that is, I trust, I promise you, trust me, that is the, the hardest bit about it. Because especially if you're someone that doesn't have an existing big social reach, right? But, but that is something that I, I would say could apply to anywhere for anyone, right? For any game, you know, think about what console is it on? What, you know, is there a game like it that is played a few hours away from you, right? Like it is absolutely really important to do that, you know, because that that is, it is just spreading the word is always the hardest thing. And it's always the bit that is the, e the easiest to get demoralized and say, oh, there's no point, and you're like, no one's coming, no one's turning up. There is there is always more you can do, in my experience. Um, but that does kind of lead me to, again, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to sound too demoralizing, but sometimes, sometimes, it there just isn't, there just isn't the, the market for it in that area, right? You are, you are going to find sometimes that, you know what, may, maybe there just is no one there to play. But I feel like, that is like an absolute last, last, last resort to 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 accept to 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 say that there's no one in my area because I feel like for some people they definitely don't do enough and they are quite quick to throw in the towel. And again, I I, I don't want to put pressure on anyone's situation. I'm not talking about anyone specifically, but I have had people before that are from places that I know have local activity. Like the amount of times I've heard someone say are there any are there any fighting game events in birmingham i swear there's nothing around you know where versus fighting the biggest european fighting game tournament takes place every year where they have regular events for tekken mortal Kombat. every couple of months there'll be something and even then they're an hour away from leicester they're you know travel distance to wherever it is and a lot of people they they convince themselves very early on that that's the you know, you know what it is what it is. It's just the way that things are. And I feel like there is definitely more that people can do um, to, 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 to get the word out there, you know, because a lot of people assume that you, you can only say you have a local if you've got like 20 people a week, you know, bollocks, bollocks to that. Like if, if your, lo your local can have four people, your local can literally have four people. And if it's four people that enjoy themselves, if it's four people that are playing together and they, they see that local as a highlight of their week, you have absolutely succeeded, you know? That is like don't don't set your sights too high. Remember, you are starting from scratch. You are building from the ground up. You know, it could be a couple of students one week. It could be a couple of guys off some random Facebook group the other week. The venue itself might help you get the word out. Like in Firebug, you know, now they have hyper combos. Like they've got posters in the venue for it. Their socials are all over it, and it's really good. But it took a long time to get to that point. You know. Um, and it does take time. Yeah, I, I, Nottingham, Nottingham scene is, is is a is a prime example of that. And actually, another point that I that I want to make, um, don't don't feel like it has to be a weekly in order to be a local, because if you have if you have a weekly event, it is very easy for the apathy to to kick in, and for players to be like. Uh, do I really want to go this week? I'll just go to the next one. I'll just go to next week's. And then seven days passes. Mm, do I need to? Uh, I'm feeling pretty tired. I'll go to the next one. And then before they know it, no one's do no one's going anymore and the event has to stop, you know? And because and all the all, people are paying money to hire out venues or that's lugging all their equipment. They're getting taxis or their petrol money, whatever. And just no one's turning up anymore. And then the local dies. I mean, how many, how many of you guys have seen this? That a local will die that has healthy players and then the local will, will stop. And then all the people in the area will be like, oh, what? No way. I was definitely going to go to the next one. Like, I've seen that happen so many times across the UK, the USA, because again, it's it's consistency, keeping people interested, and sometimes just giving people a bit of a kick up the ass, you know, because it, it happens. Uh, but it is what it is at times, you know. Uh, now I wanna I wanna open this I wanna open this up to some questions from you guys, and kind of to finish my other point, it's actually the main reason because a lot of people have said, why don't you make hyper combo a weekly? And it's it's because of that. I, I, in our experience, having it every two weeks not only means that we get to really focus on the ones that are there, it also means that it is very hard for players to excuse saying to themselves, I'm going to miss this one, I'll go to the next one. Because if you miss one, it's a month until your next one, right? And for some people, that's like, oh, hang on a minute, that's 
that's a long time. I ain't going to do this no more. And then they'll make, they'll make sure to attend. And it's, it's worked well for us. I'm not going to say it works for everyone, but it does work for us 100%. So I know a lot of you guys have been asking questions in chat, but I didn't want to lose my train of thought. So let's chat about this. Do we have anyone in chat that wants to talk? Have you got any questions, examples, and anything at all that I might be able to help you out with? Let me, let me have a quick scroll through. Let's have a look. Da, 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 da. Oh, if ever you want to come into uh, to Leicester, Sonic and him, like we are always there, bro. We're always there. In Colorado. The MK11 scene died very quickly, but has a good Tekken and Street Fighter scene. I was talking to a guy who holds tournaments and supports the FGC, and he told me there aren't enough MK11 players. What should I do about that? Should I believe him and try and find some MK players? So if you're in a situation where you have a local near you, but it doesn't do the game that you're into, um, I feel like you're kind of skipping most of those steps. Because and now, you're, now you're talking a specific game, right? Now you can get on the test your might. You can get on the UK NRS pages. You can get on the on, on the USA NRS pages, right? There might be like, again, Facebook groups based on that game. There might be Discord channels based on it. Anything that might relate to it, right? The venue is there. The local is there. The ability to play is there. Now you just have to see if, if the people exist, right? See if people used to go. Be like I said, if the numbers died out, Maybe see who was going. Like, are they still playing? Did they stop going because other people stopped going? Like, what led to that happening, right? It's kind of on you to be able to really do the legwork on the social pages. Again, social media is everything. It is so, so colossally important for just making people aware of what exists. Um, and that might mean that people already went, right? They might have already gone and now they just need some incentive to go back. Because the amount of people that I've seen, again, at different events, that might be like, they'll love going somewhere. But then people will gradually stop playing the game they're into. So then they're like, oh, well, I guess there's no point going anymore because no one plays it. The second you're going and you're playing the game they're interested in, they'll come back, right? They just have to be aware that you're there in the first place, that they know that the possibility exists. <clears throat> Metal Revolution was very fun. I really enjoyed it. I, I, I definitely don't like everything about it, but uh, I definitely enjoyed my first day. I felt that way trying to run the Northampton FGC when we lost a number of our Street Fighter players. It felt demoralizing after 18 months trying to make suggestions, build some social media, and got lost doing it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes people... like forget, That actually happened in Leicester. It's actually the reason that Hyper Combo stopped in the first place in Leicester was because Hyper Combo used to exist as primarily a Street Fighter local. It was Street Fighter 4, and then early days it was Street Fighter 5. But people just didn't enjoy Street Fighter Five at launch in this part of the country. They just they get they gave it a try. They didn't like it. They stopped playing it. They stopped going. And then the venue actually closed down. And then when the venue closed down and people dwindled in the game, they were just like, oh, well, no one's really going anymore. There's no point getting it back up again. And then, uh, but that's a big thing, right? Is if if you want to keep a local healthy, I feel like if you're an organizer, it you really have to just accept the fact that the game that you're into might not be the main game there. You know, like. For example, I'm a I'm a Mortal Kombat super fan. You know, I love competitive Mortal Kombat and NetherRealm games. I love that shit. But Mortal Kombat is not the biggest game of Hyper Combo. It's Tekken. So we cater to Tekken far more than any other game because give the people what they want. You know what I'm saying? You just sometimes you just gotta do that. And as an organizer, if you want to keep a local your local has to be flexible enough that you are you are taking it in the direction that it needs to go. Not necessarily the direction that deep down you wish it was going. I'm not saying this is what you're doing. I'm saying generally as a, a, a case in point. If it's set up as and you only have one game and that one game dwindles in popularity and people don't enjoy it, your local is probably going to die alongside it. You know. But if you have other games and other people start turning up and they get numbers and they get people turning up, you kind of have to start catering towards those. And so you should really, in my opinion, because that's, that's, that is how you keep it going, right? It's about keeping people interested in the first place. And the absolute most important thing about that is just making sure that the games that are there are games that they want to play. Uh, this will be a YouTube video, yes, at least a gem. You started yours last summer, and the one thing you struggle with is getting people through the doors. You've tried putting up posters with social media, but you're not seeing any growth. What tips or advice do you have to help foster attendance? Um, expand the reach. Honestly, that's it's, it's what I said before. If, if you're doing posters and you're making tweets and stuff, great. But just do more of it. Do more of it. Expand how vague you're being. Again, I'm literally talking like uh, aerodynamics. Like, where, where are you from, for example? Like, like what what rough area are we talking about? Soul Calibur. Oh, you came for the Soul Calibur tournament. Cool, man. 
uh, East Texas, right? So, so, so Texas. You you could literally look at like I don't know PlayStation Texas, gamers in Texas, Xbox, whatever you know. Like I'm talking, be be vague. You know, look at the games you're because remember, fighting games, fighting games are are very familiar with casual players, right? Like very 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 familiar. Like you can, you can literally go in like Mortal Kombat USA, Mortal Kombat Texas. Um, you know, reach out to the existing you know existing Texan scenes. Like you know, uh, for example, uh, Houston, Houston, Texas have a, a load of local activity. Reach out to those that exist already to be like, hey guys. I'm not near you, but I'm still in Texas and I'm a bit further away. In case there's anyone that comes to your bigger events that are in the area, can you maybe make a tweet for us? If I tweet something and send it to you, can you, can you share it out? Can you give us a bit of a boost? Because most most people, most organizers are happy to help organizers in 2020, right? I would absolutely be far more surprised to see a local uh, or organizer in any way straight up refuse to help someone with something as little as a retweet. You know what I mean? Because... I mean, it's just not how the the community works. You know what I mean? Like everyone's down to help everyone for the most part, unless they have weird beefs, which is rare, but it exists, but not very often. <clears throat> Where is Bloodborne? On the cards. We shall continue our new game plus, my dude. Have no fear. Yeah, yeah. Texas definitely has a uh, fighting game activity. But again, we're talking about local stuff, right? You want people to regularly turn up and regularly attend. Any more questions in chat, guys? I see we have a, we have a lot of comments, but not as many questions. You find having friendly faces running the event helps. You know, you personally found it daunting going to your first event, but when you see that, all cool, it's refreshing and welcome. Honestly, that's a big thing as well. Like it's it's because it is a community, right? Like if you have a if you have a local, it is its own little community, and as the organizer, you are effectively the community manager for that. You know, um. We've been quite fortunate with Hyper Combo that we haven't really had any controversy. We haven't had a... No one's a dickhead, pretty much. We haven't got any twats that turn up to our local. So we haven't had... You know, I've... I have... The only time I have... <laughs> and I, I, I really don't want to sound like I'm blowing anyone up. The only time I've ever had to take someone to one side and pretty much give them a scolding to start fucking behaving themselves. <laughs> it was our Smash... It was our Smash Ultimate Tournament when someone was being really rowdy, but like super rowdy and rude. I literally had to take him to one side and just be like, shut the fuck up. Start acting like a normal person. Um, in, in, in a, a, a few more words than that. But, um, but that's the, o the one and only time I've ever had to do that. And, and that was a busy event for us. That was a big event because like smashing this part of the UK is huge. So, you know, it was a whole event and there was like one bad apple. So, you know, it wasn't the whole guy, the, the whole community, it wasn't the whole lot of the guys. But uh, but that's but that is the oh, the factually one and only time I've ever had to to scold anyone at Hyper Combo. Um. All right, guys. So I'm. It pretty much seems to be that I think have have we covered everything. I'm I'm gonna look at the tweet and I'm gonna and I'm gonna have a look and see if uh. See if I've missed any. I'm gonna see if I have missed any comments from Twitter because I did get a couple. I think I've answered them already, but I'm going to have a have a look. What have we got? Getting people indoors. L Hines. Are you in chat? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I asked you. I'm pretty sure I, I just answered that exact question. I assume it's the same person. Who was the chap that asked about getting people through doors? Aero, ah, uh, aerodynamics. Is that is that the same person that's worded almost the exact same way? Oh, it is you. Cool. Well, I'm happy that I didn't forget to answer. How's it going, Emma? Welcome. Right, let's just talk about the local. Emma does does pop up. Um, that there is actually there's actually something there's actually something really really useful that we've been doing at Hyper Combo is um, a lot of the time when you get people at a, people come to a local, there is like a the kind of like the the plus one effect, right? Where if you have a social event. You have your your gaming event, right? Your 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 fighting game local. Some people will turn up, and for example, we get this quite a lot of hyper combo because again, the student presence and the, the the kind of the young adult social interest, I suppose you could say. Um, we get a lot of people will come in with a couple of friends, and they are the only one of the friend group that enjoys fighting games. So they'll turn up, they'll sit down, they'll play some Tekken or Mortal Kombat or whatever, and then their friends will just buy a drink and kind of just hang around right because they're not really into fighting games and they're you know 
they're, they're happy just to socialize, but they, they don't really have a lot to do there. Um, and it can be like, it could be girlfriends, boyfriends, you know, general, just plus ones and friends that maybe they're not as into gaming, but they're there with a mate that is. Um, so Emma has been doing for a long time, just bringing board games and card games, you know, set up a table for stuff that's a bit more, more social, a bit more casual, that they're social enough to be there, but not social enough to get into the niche of the video games. But card games, board games, cool. Everyone loves board games. Everyone loves card games. Um, and Emma does that every time. You know, Emma brings, you know, baked stuff. It's kind of been her, her, uh, her personal highlight is just to bring really nice baked goods every, uh, every couple of weeks, but mainly just to, you know, to, to hang out with people and chat, you know, uh, and that works out really well for us. You know, and I know there are other locals around that, that have their own kind of social stuff outside of it too, you know, maybe magic, the gathering or, you know, um, uh, whatever, right? Like it, it could be anything and anything, as long as it's uh, social and people get into it but that really works out that really works out for us so for the sake of youtube this is where i'm going to be ending the youtube video thanks very much for watching guys i appreciate your time and hopefully i've been able to to help out with any kind of questions you may have had and and, and how to go around starting a local community because i can i can say with absolute confidence and certainty that um hyper combo has been absolutely one of my personal highlights in my gaming career you know like I, I love Hyper Combo. It is absolutely one of my favorite things to do now. I, I actively look forward to organizing them. We're always looking to achieve more. And I want people to have that experience too. Because local fighting game stuff is the best shit ever. And I really want everyone that wants to get involved to be able to. And hopefully, if this video results in even one community forming, I am happy. That's, that is that is the minimum I would want. Because if, if this helps even one bunch of, bunch of folks be like, oh, All cool, there's somewhere is, to go, there's something to do, this game, um, then I will consider gamer. this video a success. So hopefully it works out for you guys. Best of luck, and hopefully it works out. Thanks, guys. See you later.